Round two of this year's rugby championship competition was going to be all about who could play in wet conditions very well. It didn't matter whether you were in Auckland, New Zealand or over there in Western Australia in Perth. Both games were impacted by the climatical conditions that we saw. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the game that was played between Australia and the Springboks in Perth. So let's get into the video right now. G'day everyone and welcome back to Inside Rugby with Mark. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It's great to have you here. I'm a Kiwi bloke who loves rugby and I'm living in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And uh, I'd like to welcome you to the channel. We've had a lot of new subscribers over the last week or so, so it's great to have you all on board. And uh, to all those that are coming back and watching more of my videos, thank you very much. If you've hit that subscribe button, that's even better for me. And uh, make sure you give this video a bit of a like and also don't forget to comment and share your views on what you thought about this game. So we're heading to Western Australia, Perth it is, and uh, we're going to be talking about the game between the Australian Wallabies and the South African Springboks that was played in atrocious conditions at Optus Stadium in Perth. And it seemed to be the trend for the weekend, this weekend in the Rugby Championship. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happened in this game. Of course, the Springboks were comprehensive winners in that first game over there at Suncourt Stadium in Brisbane last weekend. And this one was an opportunity for Joe Schmidt and his team to try and stay a little bit closer to the Springboks. The Springboks, of course, had made a lot of changes to their team coming into this game, giving some of those players who might be on the peripheral of their first team an opportunity to show Rassi Erasmus what they had to offer. So just on that basis alone, it was going to be very, very interesting to see what happened. However, on the bench, the South Africans had a very e experienced bomb squad. And at any time, Rassi was going to be able to bring on these players. And uh, they were more likely than not going to make a big impact on this game. So the game got underway. And as we would expect in these kinds of conditions, it was pretty hard for both teams to get uh, really a good handle on the ball. And we saw a bit of scrappiness going on in the first minute or so. Although Australia, once again, like they did in Brisbane, they showed some serious intent and in what they were wanting to do in the game. So we only had to wait three minutes before the first points on the board in this game. And it came way of a penalty to the Australian Wallabies. Their number 10, Lolasio, got the kick over. So that put Australia up 3-0 after just three minutes. A handy lead and one that Australia would have wanted to have on the scoreboard. Play resumed and uh, it was pretty difficult for both teams as I said. We saw a scrappy line out from the Springboks. Grobola who was throwing in had some problems with his first couple of attempts. And in the fifth minute of the game we saw a cross field kick by Sasha Feinberg that just went over the touchline. It was only a few millimeters in it and uh, unfortunately that brought the Springboks back into their own territory. The Aussie and then in the 10th minute of the game, we saw the first break and it was that man, Cheslin Colby for the Springboks that darted through the Australians out wide. He had Sasha Feinberg outside him. It looked like an absolute try, but unfortunately Sasha dropped the ball, but uh, who could blame him in these conditions? Just that little millimeter of precision went awry on that particular occasion. So the Springboks were a little bit unfortunate handling on that particular occasion but it was a fantastic break by Cheslin Colby and once again as I'd said in my preview videos this guy is dangerous on the counter-attack the Australians had to watch out the first counter-attack on the Australian side came from Tom Wright deep in his own 22 ran the ball back looked very dangerous indeed and uh, I'm quite liking Tom Wright at fullback for the Aussies I think he's got a lot of potential he's very good on the counter-attack and as we would see throughout this game, he's got a good defensive mind on him as well. It was a great break by Tom Wright. But we got to the 14th minute mark and uh, it was just one of those games in these conditions. Both sides were, trying to f were finding it a bit hard, but South Africa were really starting to get on the front foot and they were starting to put some real pressure on the Australians. We saw this in Brisbane after the opening foray in the game as well, didn't we? But this week, it was once again South Africa that were really getting the territory and the possession in this game. So around the 14th minute, it was no surprise that they got an opportunity through a penalty kick to even the scores up. Sasha got the uh, kick over for the South Africans and after 15 minutes of the game, we we're all tied up at three points all. 
And then in the 18th minute mark, we had the first change of personnel in this game, and it was Salman Morat going off for the Springboks, and that man, Eben Etzebeth, coming on a little bit earlier than what Rassi would have planned, I think, for Etzebeth to come on. A man that's had 124 international caps for his country, and uh, I'm a betting man that I reckon that he's going to get to 150 in his career. Absolute beast, and I think this really helped the South Africans at this stage of the game as well by getting Etzebeth on. And we saw immediately through the first couple of touches that he had that he was really involved in the play. He handled the ball about three or four times within the first couple of minutes and uh, started to make his presence really felt on the game. In the 16th minute, we saw a fantastic play by the Springboks. It came out to the left-hand side. Mapimpi got the ball. He put a great kick forward. And the fullback, Fassi, was running onto it, collected the ball, went over for a great try to the Springboks. Unfortunately, Sasha missed the conversion from out wide and uh, the Springboks went to the lead by eight points to three. We got to the 19th minute mark and we understood by now that the kicking for goal was going to be extremely important during this game. The Australians got another penalty kick opportunity and it was pretty good decisions by their captain at this stage to decide to go for the goal and keep the scoreboard ticking over in an easy decision to try and put the uh, the ball in touch close to the line and put the pressure on the South African Springboks from the line out. But the Australians chose to go for goal. It was a good decision. And 22nd minute of the game, South Africa deep on attack again. They were really running the play at this stage. They were putting a lot of pressure on the Australians. The Australians' defence was good, but South Africa were making territorial gains. And a minute later, they got another penalty kick opportunity. Sasha came up and nailed that one as well. So South Africa went out to 11 points to 6 after 23 minutes of the first half. I felt at this stage of the game that the Aussies were keeping pace with the South Africans, although the South Africans had the majority of possession and territory. The Australians were putting in some good defensive plays, but they were hanging in there and they were looking quite good. Lolasia was doing a couple of good things from number 10, and I was pretty excited about what Tom Wright was doing from a counter-attacking perspective as well. Corabetti was very hungry in this game in that first 20 minutes or so. We saw him doing a lot of stuff. He was really contesting the kickoffs in this game. And every time he got the ball, it was his normal um, Corabetti kind of bullocking run that were doing a lot of damage and getting the ball back for Australia. So he started off having a really good game as well. So 35th minute of the first half and the Wallabies got another penalty kick opportunity, a chance to keep them close on the scoreboard. And uh, that man Lola Seo came up and got the kick over. So it was 11 points to nine after 35 minutes of the first half. Joe Schmidt would have been happy, even though South Africa were getting a lot of possession, putting a lot of pressure on the Australians in their territory. But where it mattered on the scoreboard, the Springboks at this stage had not got away from Australia. It was a much improved performance, I thought, from the Australians. They were looking good across the field. They had a couple of really good players in the forwards that were doing a lot of good work, particularly Alala Toa was playing very, very well, as was NASA in the front row. And uh, we saw some big work as well from Valentini, who was getting involved, and also uh, Salakai Lotto was having a good game, I thought. So a couple of the Australians were really standing out. I thought Lolasia was controlling things the best he could in the conditions at number 10. Wasn't making too many mistakes and he was looking dangerous when he was doing a couple of little darting runs early in that first half. Now we're only a couple of minutes away from half time and the question for me was were the Olibi, uh, Wallabies going to be able to go to the half time break close to the South Africans on the scoreboard? Well, one minute before half time, they actually had an opportunity to go in the lead. They got given a penalty kick. That was probably one of the easier ones of the day for Lolasio, but unfortunately, he missed it. And uh, the Australians didn't end up going to half time in the lead. It was 11 points to nine in favor of the South Africans. Overall, a much improved performance, I thought, from the Australians. They looked enterprising in different ways. The cross kick was a little bit dangerous for them. Each time they tried it, we had Colby particularly looking very very dangerous on the counter attack and that was one thing that the Australians needed to to work out. Mapimpi we saw also got another cross kick from Lolasio that he looked like he was going to break from. So the Australians needed to be careful. They were doing a bit of risk and reward looking for those cross kick opportunities I thought in that first half. And uh, we know how dangerous South Africa are on the counter attack and I talked about this in the preview video in terms of how that back three for South Africa can really, really hurt you if you're not executing your kicking well. But I thought overall, compared to their kicking strategy last week in Brisbane, I thought the Australians did much better in this first half. 
but the territorial gain and the amount of possession that the Springboks were getting uh, was very, very intense and on their side. A couple of errors from Grobola in that first half when it came to line-out throws, and Ryan Norkia had a little bit of a trouble in the line-outs as well. I think some of this came down to the communications, and I think since Itzabeth came on, things started to change around a little bit for the South Africans in the line-out situation. So there we go. It was 11-9 at half-time, and I think that uh, the South African coach, Rassi Erasmus, would have said to the guys, boys, we had, a few time, we had a few opportunities in that first half to get away and score a couple of tries. We didn't execute. We need to do that better in the second half, despite the conditions we're playing in. And on the other side, I think Joe Schmidt would have said, well, I think we did a pretty good job to stay within two points of the world champions when it came to half time. On the South African side, I say it every time, but I thought Peter Steff de Toy was having a fantastic game. I thought Vandenberg was playing well at halfback. He was fast, he was getting the ball out. And if you've been watching any of my videos so far, I talk a lot about the speed of halfbacks and how important I believe it is for the halfbacks to get their, their forwards and their team going forward. And I thought Vandenberg did a pretty good job of that in the, that first half. Sasha again was just showing his brilliance. He made a couple of errors in that first half, but they weren't that costly for the Springboks. And I think when you have a player, his talent, with the lights and, and the types of creativity that Sasha has, it's better for him to go with those opportunities and try and make them work. And uh, the only one he really fumbled up was the opportunity from Cheslin Colby when he dropped the pass. Other than that, I thought he was playing really well indeed. Outside of him, Lucano Arm was going well in the second five position. And then outside centre, Jesse Creel. Well, he was just being Jesse Creel, which is always consistent. Fassi at fullback had a good start to the game. He scored a good try in that first half. He was supporting Mapimpi on the outside. And South Africa looked dangerous when they brought their back three into play. So going into half time, it was even Stevens. But South Africa, I felt, were really starting to build some momentum into the game. Hey, welcome to the halftime break here on Inside Rugby with Mark. And before we get back to the game and this talking about the second half and what happened, I just want to share with you quickly ways that you can help support me here on my channel. Now, I started this channel because I want to play a small role in helping to grow the game of rugby across the world. The way that I'm going to do that is just to simply share my passion for the game. And hopefully a lot of old and new supporters of the game will come on board and be part of this community. So if you want to help me do that, here are five ways that you can do that. The first one, of course, subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. All you've got to do is hit that subscribe button and you'll be part of our community. The second one is to like my videos and give it a lot of love. The third one is make sure you leave a comment. And remember, be respectful in your comments, both to me and also to the other members of our global rugby audience. The fourth way you can support me is look at the super thanks and see whether you can contribute in any way to that. That helps me being able to make more and more videos and spend more of my time being able to make this kind of content. And then the last way you can support me is by following me on Twitter. Yes, I'm on Twitter now talking about rugby, of course, and sharing a lot of thoughts and opinions around that. So head over to Twitter, Inside Rugby MP, that's my handle. I'll put it in the description of this video and you can follow along. And then lastly, before we get back to today's game, I just wanted to let you know about the respect that we have for each other in this community. If you do make an abusive comment in the comments, then you will get a yellow card. And if you do that a second time, then you're going to get a red card and you're going to be blocked from this channel. Now, some people, just a couple of you have said, oh, this is a bit woke and who are you to do censorship? Well, this is my channel. Those are the standards that I set. And if I feel something's abusive towards me or any member of our community, you'll be shut off from this channel. Most of you agree with my card system, so that's great to hear. So we're not going to have any problems moving forward. OK, now let's get back to the second half and talk about what happened between the Australian Wallabies and the South African Springboks at Optus Stadium in Perth, Australia today. Now, early in the second half, something very crucial happened in the 41st minute, in fact. And it was in a penalty that was given to the Springboks. And we had this, the Australian halfback, Nick White, giving a bit of cheek back to the referee. And he'd already, uh, Paul Williams, the referee, had already warned Nick White in the first half to keep his mouth shut that he was in control of the game and he didn't want to hear any of his back chat. Well, Nick White absolutely went over the line and said something to the referee. 
and he got marched back to 10 metres. That was a huge costly mistake for the Australian Wallabies at that stage of the game. And I hope that Joe Schmidt gets right up Nick White after the game because this really put Australia in a difficult situation. The South Africans took the penalty kick towards the corner. They had their line out and from the ensuing mall, it was Marco Van Staden that went over for a great try for the Springboks. So that try, was uh, as a result of Nick White's big mouth going off and I hope Joe Schmidt gets right up him for that one because it cost the Australians those points and it really put them on the back foot at the beginning of the second half. It was the last thing that they wanted that to happen at that particular stage. So the score was 11-9 at half time, just a couple of minutes into the second half after that try and the conversion was good from Sasha Feinberg. South Africa found themselves out to 18 points to nine. Then Racy decided to make a couple of changes. He brought on Malcolm Marks and Oxen Chair, and uh, I'm sure that this was once again going to be a bit of the insurance policy coming on for the South Africans now that they'd got some uh, points on the board and into the lead a little bit further against the Australians. And we were going to start to see whether the impact of the South African bench was going to have a big factor or play a big factor in the remainder of this game. Australia were doing some good things in this game, but they weren't able to find themselves over the uh, South African line at this stage. And we just waited a couple of more minutes, and it was another penalty kick opportunity that came Australia's way. Lolisio, the number 10, came up and was successful with that. He was having a good kicking day as far as the tee was concerned. And that brought the score back to 18 points to 12 in favour of South Africa. So the Wallabies were clawing their way back into it. But we would see pretty shortly how costly that try was that Nick White gave away. From the 47th to the 49th minute, we had a couple of...